Hey guys, um, it's been a it's been a while. I think about a week or so. Um, well, maybe two. Um, I just finished watching um, Stephen Furtick's sermon from this week called "The Lonely Place." If you have uh, time, watch it. It's it's about an hour long, but it's an hour worth your time. Um, and it, he talked about lonely places and how people struggle with lo lo loneliness, whether you're married, single, wh whatever, how we all have spots of shame and how uh, Jesus came to take away those spots of shame. And as, as I was listening to this, I began to think of... Um, the cry of people's hearts um, and you you guys know I love music so the song that came to my heart was um, Take Me to the King by Tamla Man so before I start um, preaching and sharing with you I'm going to sing a part of that song a bit of it Truth is, I'm tired. Options are few. I'm trying to pray, but where are you? I'm all churched out, heard and abused. I can't think what's left to do. Take me to the king I don't have much to bring My heart is torn in pieces It's my offering Lay me at the throne Leave me there alone To gaze upon your glory and sing to you the song Take me to the king Um I was thinking as he was preaching about the, the um, person with leprosy and how Jesus touched the person and how Jesus made himself available for the broken. And I love the church. I've grown up in the church all my life. But one thing um, in general about the church that I find is we don't leave room for people to come to the king. It's like we say one thing. We say he's here for the broken. We say it's a hospital. Um, but we mean he's here for s some issues and we don't really make ourselves as leaders, as pastors, as bishops available. I know some churches do and some churches don't. But I, I, I so hear the cry of people saying today, take me to the king. I don't want any, I don't want anything. I don't want um, big experiences. I don't need the show, although the show is great and uh, verbose, loud, um, worship is great. All of that is great. But what people need right now is Jesus. And that's what the cry of, of people's hearts are saying. They don't even know what they need. They're getting high on drugs. They're, they're sleeping with every man or woman or, or both that they can. They're thieving. They're trying to get success, thinking that that would fill them. But what they're really saying is, 
Take me to the king. And they don't even know that they're saying take me to the king. What they need is Jesus. I was reading, I was listening to a secular um, actress. I was listening to her book. And all I kept thinking was, oh my God, she really needs Jesus. And if I was there, if I was in that moment with that lonely girl who had, who had no, who had no structure and nobody to look out for her, I would lead her to Jesus. People are so desperate, are so desperate for someone thing to hold on to. They're not desperate for religion. They're not even, they're not even, they don't even know what they're desperate for. But they're desperate for Jesus and their heart's cry is take me to the king. It's, it's like we've created a space where we say perfection is not expected. We say God is here for the, we say that the Lord is here for the broken, but our presentation of perfection is, we think it's drawing people to us, but it's some, sometimes keeping people away. And I think God is so hungry for you, beloved, to just be yourself with him and be who you are and he loves you that same way and the world is hungry to see Jesus they don't want to see the show they want to see Jesus and and their heart is crying out crying out they're desperate not for religion not for uh verbose worship not for all of that where all that's great they're desperate for Christ. They're desperate to know that there's someone who loves them, someone who's got their back in spite of all they go through, in spite of who they are, what they are, straight, gay, black, white, twisted in whatever kind of way. He loves them. And I think in churches, uh, we need to do more to create spaces where um, people don't have to um, people don't have to pretend they can be broken, they can be dirty, they can be messed up. I think um, it's time to change our perspective and the, and the way we do church because when I think of when I think of Jesus and his ministry and what he taught and how he taught, I, I see just a man who, who the broken were drawn to, who was with other people that, that the, that the uh, Jewish people, the religious people of the, t of the time, couldn't be bothered with. So I have to wonder, um, are we really afraid to um, get down the way Jesus did? It's so much easier for churches to give away money, to do this, to, um, to um, do that and all that is necessary all that is wonderful but I'm just wondering if God wants us to go um, to the broken to the needy to, not just needy physically it could be needy emotionally um, like I know lots of churches have, have homeless um, things and things to feed the homeless and things to help the widows and we should we're told to help the widows and the orphans and the hungry and whatever but I I'm 
I'm of the belief that brokenness comes in all forms. You can be rich and broken. You can be married and broken. You can be single and broken. You can be a pastor and broken. We all have broken places. And if we can just shine the light of Jesus by saying, not I'm better for I'm better than you. I'm I'm better and I know the way, so follow me but by saying I'm broken too. And here's what helped me in my brokenness. Jesus helped me when when I was broken. Jesus helped me when I was struggling. Jesus came to me when, when I was in desperate need of love. When I was in desperate need of someone to just put their arms around me. I think if we can um, get rid of the spirit of perfection, I think people would come running to the kingdom of God, running to churches because they can say, oh, God likes the messed up too? I messed up, so I'll go with him. But if we continue to always put this facade on of perfection, people stay away from that. They think we're hip hypocritical because um, that's what we portray. But we're not, but I think um, being hypocritical is fear in disguise. I'll say that I honestly believe that being hypocritical, um, being a, you know, is fear in disguise. We, we're afraid that if you, if we take off the mask and people see who we really are, we won't be loved, we won't be respected, we won't be, we won't be admired anymore. And I think that's kind of what keeps us back and keeps the facade going because if we honestly were to get real and take off that mask, people might not like us anymore. And I, I know we do this thing for God, not for people, but, but tell the truth. No one likes to be ostracized, but what we really need to understand is our broken places, the places that need God are the places that will attract people to God. I'm not saying to bleed all over people. I'm saying to show your brokenness so that people can um, say, you struggle with that too? Cool, maybe the God, maybe this God thing will work for me. Bleeding all over people is not a good idea. Let me explain the difference between bleeding on people and showing your brokenness to people. Um, bleeding on people is where you're, you're constantly talking about your issues. You're constantly looking for sympathy. You're constantly um, crying. Your, your heart is breaking and you want people to feel sorry for you. And you, you bleed all your grievances on them. Like, you bleed and you bleed and you bleed and every time they see you it's an issue. People like that cause people to run from them because they're never happy. It's, it's always that issue. If you are bleeding, there is healing, there is hope, there is peace, there is pastoral counseling, there are there are therapists to help you. Usually when you're bleeding from trauma, your friends can be there for you, they can pray for you, they can offer what help they can. But the but usually 
you need more help than they can provide. So don't expect your friends if you're bleeding to carry you. Um, go to a therapist, um, go to a pastor, go to a professional to help you work out and sort it out all out. Uh, uh, now let's talk about showing your brokenness. Showing your brokenness is like um, you're showing people where you, you hurt, not for sympathy, not for anything else, but to um, tell them, yes, I hurt there too, and I'm still healing. But you're not, you're not bleeding constantly. You're just showing them, oh yes, I hurt too. And it is healthy to do that. Because people said, people will say, if she can do that, I can do it. I was listening to, I think it was, I can't remember if it was Brene Brown or whatever. Um, or, um, no, it wasn't Brene Brown. I forget who it was. Uh, she was talking about uh, when uh, she was on Facebook and they were having a chat with these questions with, with uh, the most embarrassing moment and all these questions. And all, the, all these other answers were kind of flaky and all, all these uh, other people answered with flaky answers like uh, when I drop my shoe in the toilet. And she answered with the truthful answers from her very soul. And people were like, oh, and that is uh, strange. But, but on the other side, when she put her truthful post about what was going on inside her in those answer to those questions, um, other people, it gave other people courage to be real and to be, to be vulnerable. And, uh, I wish I could remember who it was. Anyway, um, it was, and a lot of people got help from her post. Um, so this was years ago I was watching this. So, the, I said all that to say, the church needs to be a place where people are taken to the king. That they not only learn about the king, not, not only learn about the king of kings and lord of lords, but that they get to experience him. So... So when they go home, the experience continues. Church is not a place for you to just sit down and do, uh, do the worship things. Church is a place for you uh, to get fed so you can, you can learn tools how to continue it on uh, in your everyday life. Worship and the Word is not meant to stop, not meant to be just on Sundays. It's You're meant to be the living Word, which means where you walk, God walks. You're meant to speak the Word in every situation. And But a, a lot of people are not speaking the Word because they're, because they're hurting and they don't know where to go. And I'm here to tell you today, Jesus is waiting for you. There's nothing that you've done, nothing that you will ever do that will disqualify you from his love. There's nothing that you will ever do that he doesn't know about. There's nothing that you will ever think 
that he doesn't know about. And he just wants you to say, want, he just wants you to say, Lord, t take me and mold me and make me. Not, not just as a cutesy worship song or whatever, but the real thing. He doesn't want cutesy worship anymore. He wants the real thing. Um, there was a song in the 60s. Ain't nothing like the real thing. And that's what he wants. He wants the real thing. He wants you where you really are. So he can take you to where he, he wants you to be. But if you're, if you're doing the, ch the church thing and just just fooling everybody including trying to fool him and tell him where you're not he can't take you where he wants you to be god deals with off with often with authenticity best and some people are were have been pretending for so long they don't know how to be authentic. They don't know how to be real. They don't know how to be not scared of being who they really are. They don't know how not to be quote unquote perfect. And the Lord is saying to those people that it's okay. Come to me and I will show you how to be real. I will put people around you that will minister to you that will help you, that can take your scars, that can take your mess, that will help you um, to be whole. The Lord's ultimate dream is for you to be in good health, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. He says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health. That's his wish for you. And if you if you want to be taken to the king today, he's right there. He's right there. All you have to do is say, Lord, I need you. And say it in your own words. Say it in your own way. He doesn't want to hear a preacher pray. He doesn't want to hear... Um, some uh, theological doctor praying. He wants to hear your words. He wants to hear the sound of your heart. He wants to hear your brokenness. He wants to hear your tears. He wants to hear your fears. And when you bring that to him, he can take it over and do work miracles with it. And that's what he wants to do in your life today. So thank you for listening to me this evening. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye. I think I botched Take Me to the King. <laughs> Sorry about that, Tamla man. If you ever see this, take care. Bye. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces. It's by offering. Lay me at the throne. Leave me there alone. To gaze upon your glory. And sing to you the song. Take me to the king. And he's saying right now, you, you want something real, you want something not phony. He said, experience me for real. Experience me past church. Experience me past what you've known before. Experience me past religion, past your culture. Past your religious construct. 
I want you to know me for real. I want you to love me for real. I want you to do this thing for real. He said, if you're gonna do it, do it for real. If you're gonna praise me, praise me for real. If you're gonna worship me, worship me for real. If you're gonna st study about me, study me for real. He wants your heart. And he doesn't want it in the cutesy worship song that we could uh, we always say, Lord, I give you my heart. He want he's sick of you singing it. He wants you to just give it to him. He wants you to just give it to him. He doesn't need it in a cute tune. He doesn't need it in any way but you to say, Lord, take it or he wants you to say that in your own way, in your own time when you're ready. And if you're not ready to truly say that, he wants me to tell you it's okay. It's okay. Just take one step at a time. If you want to give him, if you're not ready to give him your whole self, he says, give him one room at a time. If you're not ready to give him your whole self, give him one room at a time, one issue at a time, and then eventually he will have your whole self. And you won't even realize it. You won't even realize your burdens are lifting. You won't even realize your, your spirit is lighter. You won't even realize how much you gave it to him. Because sometimes when we say, you can have my heart, you can have my heart, it's wonderful to say, it's, it's very hard to do. He said, if you can only give me a room to start with, I'll take it. Whenever you're willing to give him, he'll take it. And rem remember that when, when he takes it, he'll take it over. And then you will want to give him the rest of you. Because that one area will be so redeemed, so healed, so restored, that you will just want to give him the rest of you. So if you can't give him all of you right now, genuinely because you're too afraid or whatever give him one room and see what he does with that room i declare that miracles are coming right now i declare that healing is coming right now i declare that peace is coming right now i declare that power is coming right now i i i by the power of the holy spirit break every spirit of resistance that is talking to you right now that says it's over that you can't do it that you can't that you can't be who he's called you to be I declare that you will be what he's called you to be in the name of Jesus just give him one room at a time take one step at a time Take one day at a time. Oh, oh, today he wants your heart. Today he wants your heart. Oh, oh, today he wants your heart. Today he wants your heart. Oh, 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 you can have my heart. You can have my heart. Oh, oh, oh you can have my heart. You can have my heart. I know some of you are afraid. 
you're terrified to give him even a piece of your heart. But there's no need to be terrified. He's got you. He won't break your heart. You know, that boyfriend has broken your heart. That girlfriend has broken your heart. That friend has broken your heart. Some of you, every person that you've been in contact with has broken your heart. And the Lord said, give the broken pieces to me. I want your broken pieces because I want to make it whole. Even if it's piece by piece, room by room, I'll, I'll take everything you're willing to give me. Stop holding on so tight. Stop fighting alone. He wants your heart, even piece by piece, even one piece at a time. As much as you feel willing and able to give him, he'll take that part of your life and bless it. And suddenly, you, you, and slowly, you'll give more and more and more to him. Until you won't even recognize your life that your life will be going in such a new direction, you won't even recognize yourself. Your friends won't recognize you. Your family won't recognize you. You'll be a total new creature. He's, he says, um, he, 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 he creates new creatures in the Bible. And he just wants you to know whatever you're willing to give him, it's okay. It's okay. See you later, guys. For real this time. See you later, guys.
You can have my heart. You can have. 